Hey guys, I'm Lindsay with SparkFun Electronics Department of Education. Today we're going to talk about the protoboard. What the protoboard is, is it's a microcontroller here, FTDI board, various sensors and outputs, and then a little proto prototyping area right here. Uh, basically what this allows you to do is it allows you to plug in to your computer and start programming these sensors and outputs using your microcontroller immediately without having to plug any of these circuits into your breadboard. So you can see here on the back of the ProtoSnap that there are actually little tiny traces in this PCB connecting the sensors, the various pins on the sensors, to pins on the microcontroller. So for example, you can follow the trace for the signal of this light sensor as it goes back to the microcontroller. And the same thing goes for all the rest of the of the outputs and the sensors. So the first thing I need to do is plug in my FTDI cable. So I'm going to plug the mini side in like that, and then my other side goes into my computer over here. So the connections that have already been made for you are marked very clearly on the ProtoSnap board, but let's go over them just in case you're not familiar with it. This is the button, and it's connected to pin 7, as well as a power and a ground. This is our light sensor. It's connected to ground here, and then analog pin zero, as well as a power source over here. Next, we have our RGB LED. This RGB LED is connected to pin five for green, pin six for blue, pin three for red, and finally, a power source, because it's a common anode LED. We'll go into this later if you're not familiar with this type of LED. Finally, we have our buzzer here, which is connected to pin 2 and ground. Over here, this is prototyping area that you can use to solder additional sensors onto here if you like. So the ProtoSnap comes pre-programmed. So when you plug it in, you're going to see various behaviors. For example, when I press the button, the buzzer goes off. And when I cover the light sensor, the RGB LED starts flashing different colors. After I've plugged in my ProtoSnap, the first thing that I need to do is I need to choose my proper board type and my proper COM port. So even though this looks like an Arduino Mini Pro, this is actually a microcontroller with an Opti bootloader on it. That means you can treat it exactly like an Arduino Uno. So I'm going to go to Tools, select Arduino Uno as my board type, and then I'm going to go to my serial port options, and I'm going to select the correct COM port. Now I'm going to upload a blank sketch, and we should see a change in the behavior of the microcontroller once it's uploaded. So now that we've verified that our ProtoSnap is talking to our computer, we can go ahead and start writing code for it. The first thing we're going to play with is our button. So this button actually has what is called an internal pull-up resistor. So there's a couple things I need to do in the code in order to make that work. First, I need to make sure that I declare this as an input in my setup function. And then I need to make sure that I pull the internal pull-up resistor on the microcontroller high in my setup function. I do this simply by writing digitally to the pin that this is connected to and telling it to be high. So what I'm going to do here is first, I'm going to declare the pin mode for pin 7, which my button is attached to, as an input. Next, I'm going to digitally write the internal pull-up resistor high just by sending pin 7, a digital write high command inside of the setup function. Now, I can use the input from button from the button pin however I like in my sketch. However, I have to remember that when the button isn't being pressed, the signal is going to be high because there's electricity going through it. When I press the button, that's when I provide a path to ground and so my signal will be low. So next, we're going to talk about setup that we need to use the light sensor. It's attached to analog pin zero. And so analog pins already know that it's going to use an analog signal as its input. So really, all you need for this is to use some type of analog read inside of your loop function. 
In order to do this, usually you'll have to create a variable and basically set that variable equal to whatever your analog zero pin reads. I'll go ahead and do that now. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm creating a variable up here. I'm calling it variable light. And it's going to be an integer type variable because basically analog inputs uh, return a signal that's in between 0 and 1023. Now I'm going to set my variable light equal to whatever I read off of my analog pin. So next, let's talk about the RGB LED. This LED is a common anode LED, which is probably a little different from the, from the LEDs that you're used to. Basically, what this means is that there's one line which supplies power to each of the three LEDs inside of this RGB LED. That means in order to supply power or a current running through the LED, you need to actually pull the pin to ground in order to supply a path that the electricity can take, as opposed to pulling the pin high on a regular LED, which supplies electricity. Because basically, there's always electricity supplied by the power um, to all three of the LEDs. And you just need to close the circuit so that electricity is running all the way through that circuit and lighting up your LED. So now, all I need to do is send digital write signals to each of the LEDs. So you need to write all three of the LEDs, either high or low, depending on what you want to light up. For example, if I just want my green LED to light up, I need to tell it to write low because it's a common anode LED. And then I need to make sure that I tell the blue and the red LEDs on pins six and three to write high in order to turn them off. Otherwise, all of my LEDs will, will light up and I'll have a hard time telling which LED I actually sent a signal to. So I'm gonna go ahead and type that code in here. So it's just a simple digital write command to pin five for green and I'm going to tell it to write low because I'm lighting up my, my green LED. Now I need to make sure that I remember to write the rest of the LEDs high in order to turn them off. Now I can upload and verify that my code works. So next, we're going to talk about the buzzer. The buzzer is connected to pin 2, and all you need to do is use a tone function, which is already in your Arduino library, in order to make it work. So basically, I need to declare pin 2 as an output in my setup function. And next, I'm just going to type tone it turns into one of those highlighted words uh, that's highlighted in red. And so I'm actually going to find it in the reference so I know exactly what tone does. So basically tone is a function that just as, an, as input takes your pin number and then your frequency. The frequency is the frequency of the tone in hertz. And that's going to control what sound the buzzer is actually making. You can also add a third variable, which is the duration that it plays the tone. So I'm going to go back into my sketch. And I'm going to talk to pin 2. I'm going to t tell it to play 1100 hertz. And I'm going to tell it to play for 1,000 milliseconds or one second. After that, I'm going to add in a delay so that we can get some silence. So 
So next, let's talk about the protoboard area. Basically, this is where you're going to attach sensors or anything you want to add on to your proto, proto snap. The way it works is you're going to solder into these little holes, these little vias, they're called. And basically, these guys are attached up and down this way, where you see these white lines in between them. So anything that you solder into this hole, you'll be able to get a signal off of here or maybe even supply power here. Um, these holes up here are not connected to anything. So basically, this works kind of like a tiny breadboard. And it should be fairly useful if you're trying to attach sensors. So finally, I've got my protosnap working the way I want it to work. And what I can do in order to embed it in a project is take this off and start snapping the pieces off. First, it goes my FTDI chip. Next, I'm going to snap off the various sensors. And I'm not using the proto board, so I'm going to leave it there. Or actually, I'm going to put it over there. And now, I need to snap off the rest of these attachments. Don't worry about breaking this centerpiece, because you're not using it anymore. The key thing is to not bend the microcontroller too much. But these guys are pretty sturdy. So don't worry too much about breaking it. You may want to use a pair of clippers in order to get the last couple connections, like that. So I want to make sure that I recreate my connections exactly the way they were on the ProtoSnap board. So for example, my light sensor, which uses analog pin 0, needs to be attached to analog pin 0 using wires and solder. Otherwise, it's not going to work the way I loaded my code on originally and tested using the unsnapped protosnap. One thing that you'll have to change once you've unsnapped the protosnap is you need to provide power to your protosnap because the FTDI board is no longer providing it. So basically what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to attach some type of battery source or power source to both raw and ground over here on these pins. You can, use that using, you can do that using a JST connector or just attaching wires there using solder. So here's an example of embedding the ProtoSnap into a project. Because the ProtoSnap sensors and microcontroller are so small, I can actually embed it in a toy fire truck that I found. And all I've added is a simple switch to turn an on off and a battery. So what this does is it turns on or off depending on if the light sensor has light provided to it at the very bottom. And I can show you inside that basically that microcontroller fits in there. And there's that tiny LiPo battery over on the side there. So when I put this down and I cover the light source, it starts flashing and my siren goes off.